Well, I count it a privilege and honor to even speak his name in your presence. I must tell you that um, it was a, a ragged, circumstantial trip. I had no idea what was happening to me. I, I thought that this is all part of life. I was raised in a family that they did pretty much what they desired, whatever they felt like doing. But I had gone to church, and I had gone to church camps, and I had been around Christian people. My grandfather was a pastor, Methodist pastor, 32nd degree master mason, and a, just a fine man who loved me, and I knew it. So after, after we got married, we moved to Chicago and got married there. Uh, we had three boys. I uh, got involved in a industry whereby I was designed to, as a salesman to wine and dine accounts. And that drew me close to alcohol. And uh, it kind of washes your mind and you sometimes wonder whether you're afloat or horseback. But uh, the point being is that I got involved with a relationship with another woman. And uh, I came home one night and I told my wife that I was going to leave her, that I didn't feel that she deserved to have a man like me in her presence or the children. And uh, I thought she'd hit me in the head and say, get out of here. But what she said to me, I never forgot. She said, what have I got to do to save our marriage? Isn't that interesting? I hadn't expected that. And so it stunned me. And then I thought, well, you know what? After a week or so, I thought, I I'll just, I I'm going to take my wife and the three boys, and we're going to go back to Wisconsin. I'm going to get her by her family, and then I'm going to fade off into the sunset. And prior to that, what had happened is that I had started a trail of severe, true right-sided migraines, and I would be having attacks. And uh, life was really taking a toll on me physically, and I was getting all kinds of drugs to, to sustain it. But the truth of the matter was, uh, drugs weren't doing it. So um, when we got into Wisconsin, uh, Fran started working at the hospital, and I had an analyst there that I would go see and, at the hospital, and we had one car, so... Um, I would take her to work and I would pick her up and bring her home. And I was also the manager of the one hour Martinizing on 8th Street, if you remember that, uh, on 8th Street here in Rapids. And this is back in 1970, if you can remember back in 1970. <laughs> At any rate, uh, to continue, the, um, I said to the analyst, I said, why don't you fess up? I mean, where am I really at in all this? You know. And he says, well, you know, Bill, he says, I, I really like you. He said, but I'll tell you one thing. He says, you're like a, like a time bomb. You're ready to go off any minute. I said, what? What, what, what do you mean? What are you saying? He says, well, you just have no idea. He said, you could uh, literally drive over to the, this is in January, by the way, uh, over to the Grand Avenue Bridge there. And he says, walk up on top of it, middle of winter, jump off it, and never know you were doing it. I got up out of that seat and I left his office and I drove our car down by the Odd Fellows Hall and I looked up over there and I thought, gosh, 35, 40 years old, this is what you do, you, it's all over, this is life. And uh, so I went to pick up my wife and she recognized uh, when you have a true right sided migraine, you have a masking over your face. And, Everything gets clouded, and uh, you know. Then every time your heart beats, it's like someone's stabbing you. And uh, so she knew it, I had an attack coming on. And usually I would go home and get into my bedroom and I'd bang my head against the wall. And I wouldn't want anybody, even the cat, walking by the outside. I didn't want any noise. So this would last for about 35, 40 minutes, something like that, and then start life all over again. Well, as we pulled in the driveway on 19th Avenue South on the west side, I said to her, um, she says, aren't you coming in? I said, no, I can't. I said, I have to get to the office. 
I have responsibilities there at the, the plant at the one hour martinizing. I gotta take care of it. She thought, oh my God, and she was afraid of me anyway, so she wasn't gonna say anything. So she shut the door and I drove off and I went down. You know where Cary Avenue is at? Off the of 17th? I'm driving down Cary Avenue and as I go down over toward the water by the old um, newspaper plant, I said, oh God help me. And I went on, drove up across Grand Avenue Bridge and I got up just about even with the post office and for the first time in my life, in all those years that I had them, the attack did not come on. It was completely gone, just like that. It scared me half to death. To even to tell you about it, it, uh, it frightens me because, you know, I'm 81 now and I've never had another attack. And so when I got to that shop, I called my wife and said, oh my God, honey, you won't believe it, won't believe it, won't believe it. I was just like a little bit of a babbling idiot. <laughs> and she said, oh, she thought, oh, I hit somebody. You understand what I'm getting at? And I said, no. I said, God healed me. Really? So anyway, when I got home that night, I went into my bedroom, and I got down on my knees, and I started telling the Lord, I want to I thank you for what you've done, and I want to confess. I said, I did this, and I did that, and I started naming things, and I went back. All of a sudden, it was like he said, get up off your knees, boy. I know all about you. I know everything you've done. You're forgiven. Uh, so we were going to the assembly of God there, and uh, that's in Nakusa, and that's where I turned my heart over to the Lord. And uh, from that day forward, it was a, a different circumstance. Was it perfect? No. I wouldn't want to pretend that it was perfect. But I will tell you this, um, I saw things in a different light. And so we decided that um, uh, the boys needed salvation, of course, so we moved them into Wet Rapids Assembly, and uh, we... Uh, had the oldest boy and my wife and myself, after we made our commitments, to get uh, baptized in the tank there so, by submersion, is what I'm saying. And so we did. We Back then you had to give your testimony, you know, from the tank. So it's different now, I guess, but it doesn't matter. The most important thing was that we really believed that God had done something spectacular in our family. And so... I started looking at the Bible and I said, Lord, you know, I know Luke's a surgeon, but that's all I know about the Bible, so you're going to have to read it to me and let the Holy Spirit speak to me in such a way that I can understand it. And you know, the word started to jump off the page. And uh, it was uh, real. And uh, I realized over a period of time that I was saved for a purpose. And I, I, I didn't really know how to approach it, but God impressed me with the fact that you won't speak, Bill. The Holy Spirit will speak through you. I'll give you the words, and then I'll put you in front of those that need to hear something. And it's not Bible thumping they needed to hear. They needed to, I needed to recognize where they were at with their pain and their suffering. And I did not always share my testimony. I didn't have to do that. But what I did was share the fact that the Lord had changed my life and the Lord can help you. And so all these years that's proved itself out time in and time out. And um, I was so thankful that I got to share my faith with my family. And uh, uh, my brother, sisters, and... Uh, I, uh, my brother died here just a few months ago, and uh, so, but because we know he had made his peace with the Lord, we just look forward to the day that we'll be with him all again. And with all those that have passed before us, our two sons as well, and uh, God is not going to have us get over it. He's going to walk with us through it. And in the meantime, I recognize that also that I was saved for a purpose. Everyone is saved for a purpose. We, if you look at that word real close, the 10th verse will tell you exactly what you were reading. 
the 10th verse says uh, that uh, we are his witness. He is with, in us. And so we are a walking witness for the Lord and to be used for him for that purpose. So um, my prayer before I did this was that there was someone in our room tonight that was hurting. Someone had a special need uh, that you would recognize that you serve a big God and he can help you and he can intercede. Um, there's no perfection in any of us. As a matter of fact, there's no perfect people in heaven. They're perfected after they get there. So uh, uh, he, he has a special plan for each one of us, and he doesn't care if you're 14 or 90. doesn't matter. And remember one other little story I'll tell you quickly. Do we have time? Uh, I was crying out to the Lord up by Brokaw, coming back on one of my sales trips, and uh, I said, Lord, my, my dad, why didn't my, my dad died and he never ever said to me that he loved me. And I said, I just, why, why did you allow that to happen? And uh, the Lord said, Bill, let me tell you something. Your father raised four children during the Depression. You were one of them. And he saw that you, he had a sixth grade education. He saw that you finished high school. And he was thrilled with that. He said, remember, your father gave everything he had to give. You can't give something you don't have. So that settled it. And uh, that's why I believe that if you're going through some things, uh, uh, let the Lord settle the circumstance in your heart without looking for it in someone else to take care of your need. Okay? Amen. Does anybody have questions for Bill or anything? I have to share that I met Bill and Fran a few years ago. I was speaking at something at the library, and they introduced themselves to me, and we've just been friends ever since. Um, they've just they've blessed my life. They've blessed Community of Hope. And, um, um, and hearing your entire story, I've never heard it all at once. You know, I've had bits and pieces of it. Um, I can see why our hearts connected, because you know, we have so many things in common in our lives. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit does that. He knits us together. Well, you know, the whole story hasn't even been told yet. <laughs> but we'll have forever in heaven to there discuss it. There you go. It. But uh, I will say, though, that uh, my wife wrote this book, and it gives me opportunity every day when I'm on the street as a salesperson. She wrote the book for women, and it's, uh, uh, it's a Christian-led book. Her and her girlfriend wrote it. And um, I use that book, and I refer to it, uh, many of the things in it, to women that I find in the area that are screaming out loud and not saying a word. And there's a lot of them. And so uh, all I'm saying is that it, it gives me opportunity to uh, express the love of Christ. But um, anyway, I thank you for allowing me to share this here. Oh, we thank you, Bill. I've asked Bill if he would close us in prayer tonight. Father, as we quiet our souls before you, uh, our prayer is thank you for all that you've done. We recognize if we've never been in the valley of life, there's no way you'll appreciate the mountaintop. And heaven is the mountaintop. But there can be mountaintops in our lives as we go if we trust in you, because you see that we understand the difference of being at the bottom and headed toward the top. Thank you, Lord, as the new day arises, that your hearts are stirred. If you've not made a commitment to the Father, I just pray that this somehow, some way, will direct you directly to him. As a young man, I recognize that uh, I am going to be held accountable for my wife, and my sons, their spiritual walk. And as I stand before you today, I know that our boys are in heaven because I have the days, days and dates that they made their commitments. And I know my heart, my wife's heart. So I thank you, Father, for this opportunity as we close tonight that we will walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen. So if anybody has questions about salvation or what Bill or I were talking about, Feel free to talk to either one of us after. Um, 
Otherwise, I would like to send you off with a blessing from Philippians 4, 7. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>